Guitar Show. This is your free 30 minute guitar lesson that's coming live every Sunday to my YouTube channel and also the Your Guitar Academy YouTube channel. In this episode, we're going to be covering essentially how to write songs, riffs, or how to jam. Now, we're going to be covering all this from the guitarist kind of point of view, so looking at the music part of, of songwriting and uh, not the lyrics or anything like that. There's a few things that it would be great to know about before we look at this lesson and we'll be discussing those in this first five minutes but then we're going to be giving you real practical examples where you're going to see us two not have anything to work from and just create new music and I want that to be a skill that you can do too. I would say first of all Thomas mm -hmm people need to be comfortable with the concept of diatonic chords, mm -hmm. otherwise known as chords in a key and major scale kind of harmony. This is something that we looked at in depth in episode eight of another guitar show, if you look back on the playlist, or I'll link to it down in the description. But just to give people something to work with here, what is diatonic chords and how does it apply to songwriting and riff writing and jamming? So diatonic chords essentially, like you said, mean they exist within a key. So the key of C major has seven chords, for example, any major key, seven chords. And each of the order of those chords will just move in line with your notes. So just very quickly, the first, the fourth and the fifth chords will be major chords. So that's C, F and G, the third, the first, the fourth and the fifth notes. So then the second, the third and the sixth chords will be minor. And then the seventh is the diminished, which is a little bit tricky to kind of get into pop music. It, it's got its uses elsewhere. And there would be a typical uh, substitution for that, which would be uh, normally a slash chord. Yeah, like in this case, A C slash B, which is this chord, um, is very common. And occasionally we start to use the uh, minor pen pentatonic scale as our kind of blueprint. And rather than kind of a B diminished, it will be the kind of B flat, so we'll yeah. get there. Which just gets into slightly combining two, which is really yes. interesting. But so we have this, uh, what I want to bring up straight away is that we have this sort of uh, what we call diatonic chord theory to work from as a blueprint. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, I encourage all of you guys so you can be able to get started with this straight away and create music that you like, even if you can only play three chords, do what the songs you like do. So we're trying to learn, not only learn the songs that we like from a playing point of view, we're learning what chords they use, what chords go together, what common guitar moves is a way I like to describe it. What is this music doing? as in the combination of the chords, the sequence, what's happening in the chords and then what's happening in the lead guitar part. And then we can start to play about with it in our own time. Now yeah. that can be tricky because what can happen is we start to emulate a little too closely. Yeah. And you know, I'm sure many guitarists in their time have tried to rewrite Wonderwall, including Noel Gallagher, because he's got many songs that use exactly the same chord sequence, but they can never quite emulate what was great about that song. Now, I'm afraid I would suggest that that's a place we should kind of start from. Start with more emulation of your favourite songs yeah. first of all, but change something core about it. Change the tempo, change the order of the chords, change one of the chords in that sequence, but you know, don't, don't change too much stuff in the early days because we're also not trying to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. You have a favourite style of player, style of music, genres and, and artists, and so do I and so do you guys. And we don't want to deviate too far away from that, otherwise we get something that could sound atonal, is an example of that, so where the chords just don't go together, just, yeah, just and it mad. is just kind of noise. Or we get something that's just not, uh, not of our, uh, as our preference, it stops sounding like something we're into. Yeah. So we're going to show you how we can start doing that on both electric and on the acoustic guitar and how we can kind of jam together. And we're going to do that in a really fun and engaging way. <laughs> okay guys, so this is what we're going to have a go at. You, Thomas, uh -huh. are going to pick a genre and a key. Ooh. Try and keep it as random as possible yeah. and we're going to do about three of these, maybe more, but I'd rather pick apart three of them. Sure. So let's start with that. Pick a genre and a key. So key-wise, let's go with D. Okay. Nice and, simple. and then genre, let's go with soul. 
Soul. Soul music. I got soul. Oh, yes. I got ham, but I'm not a hamster. <laughs> okay, let's start on the key side of things, first of all. So we've got um, the key of D. We're pres- your pr- song's probably going to start in D. It doesn't have to. And the kind of you know, one, four, and five is the G and the A. D, G, A. Uh-huh. All the major chords. A common... Uh, added chord would be the minor 6, which would be B minor, and that is plenty. If you're a beginner and you can't do B, um, kind of bar chords yet, E minor is the other one that is very kind of uh, common in that key of common chord that's mm-hmm. used. So I'll start with that one actually to get started with. Now for soul, we want something, I'm, I'm not thinking too kind of... Exactly. I'm thinking something a little bit more chilled, maybe something along the lines of... Feel that song. And you know what? I'm gonna just just stick to three oh, chords and go back to D. Oh, I like it. All right. Nice and down tempo. There's nothing like now. I will talk more about the influences on that uh-huh. after you've played something over it. Okay. I want you to play a lead line. All right. So I'm gonna go from D major scale, D major pentatonic, whatever you want. did um, was not only was it musically appropriate that fit this what what we're playing over it's like we were we were playing the same song as yeah. it were um, but you played notes along a theme mm-hmm. so your primary thought once you'd found a location was not where's my five positions of the major scale exactly. or major pentatonic it was trying to make something that sounded appropriate over this and then repeating the same thematic idea yeah. that it's a theme mm-hmm. kind of like you know the simpsons theme is and immediately and then in the rest of the simpsons theme it's just that same melody yeah. but changed ever so slightly and kind of how much can we get out of these exactly. same eight notes exactly what you just varied there. it slightly do you want to um demonstrate what the main theme so the main lick yeah was? so that's what i did Mm-hmm. So we've got a little fairly straightforward with a little hammer on in there into a pull off. Mm-hmm. And then I caught that and went, oh, okay, I quite like that. So I kind of repeated that. And then I answered it. So it's like a question. It's still hanging there. And then question again. Answered. Or, yeah. And then, so that was the core lick. I then added just a little variation with a little bit more to kind of answer it with, but it rested in the same place. And that will be, if it, I mean, we should be tabbing these out on the screen, really, I've just realized, but we will make sure that it's also, all of this is tabbed out, Mm -hmm. and the chords written out fully on each of our websites, the Andy Guitar website and the Your Guitar Academy website. Love that you talked about question and answer already. Often we can be thinking about that as two people having a conversation, maybe I'm asking a question in my rhythm part and you're answering it, but you're doing it in the same, part there, the same lead line. And the thing that made it, in my opinion, a a question and then an answer was the unresolvedness Mm -hmm. of the first lick, namely because of the note it finished on, which was not uh, part of a D chord straight loose, part of the the E minor and the G. And then when it resolved or when you answered the question, it did actually finish on a D note. That's so key to writing melodies. Now that that was instinctive though. That was right. knowing what, yeah. it, what you wanted it to sound like, and it was. I'd, it could have been a you know another note of yeah, the D it chord. Been it any just of those it just sounded like the D chord and um, yeah. the D note to finish on there. That was the same thing that I did with my rhythm part, starting on a D. Unresolvedness there it is. to so the E minor, and you know if I finish on G there. Doesn't sound yeah, finished not, until we get back to this, this one point. Like a journey. Um, that is something that should be. If you're wanting to know how to do that, um, all music in essence is kind of tension and release. And this idea of a key is is uh, elemental to that. But also the idea of cadences 
mm-hmm. cadences explains that with chords how there's a, a resolve uh, or a tension between the one and the five chord the one and the four chord and really all the chords back to the yeah. one how they all sound after you've learnt it with chords, you can start to apply that more instinctively with lead line. Essentially, just arpeggios, just the notes of the chords. So it's not even you're t- you're not even taking it particularly farther. Mm-hmm. You're just breaking up the notes in the chord into individual notes, and all of them work the same way. That's what I did there. Absolutely, um, but there, there was this this other part to it, which was just the sound of it as well. Mm-hmm. The making sure what you played the sounded. Approach unresolved and then and then resolved which is an instinctive and we get a lot of questions on how to make you know a pentatonic scale sound like a solo how to make major scale sound like a melody this is part of it just treating it like a, a melody um, the rhythm part that I played there I was kind of thinking I think it's Etta James yeah um, I'd rather go blind that kind of thing yeah I, I've not emulated those chords exactly or the way it's played exactly I'm doing something that's along those lines and you kind of picked up on that because they're da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. you know that's that's a soulful oh, line isn't it? it someone told me it was <laughs> over it's the melody notes uh, that's soulful isn't yeah, it yeah it exactly. it. we don't need beyonce or someone in the room to be able to do something that's kind of got that soul and to it's it, got right? none of this exactly we're not it's just not in it it's not but uh, you you say you you were more a note choices and a, a, a licks and scales kind of guy when you were learning what was it that ended up giving you that sort of vocabulary it was just what gave you soul man? what gave what me the soul, soul man? <laughs> I looked I just from learning more I learned to analyze the music just a little bit more so I'd, pl- I'd learn to play the melodies that someone was singing and then one day I just went oh that's interesting all these notes kind of like line up with the chords like the notes that they're singing but as what the made you move. play a soulful lead line over what was was this and my, my argument yeah. would be um, a lot of people say that music is a language and I, yes. I was talking to um, a buddy of mine at NAMM about mm-hmm. this who made a video on it recently I'll be sure to link to it somewhere below because it's really cool music in essence isn't a language per se his, was his argument I'm not saying this exactly don't, yeah. don't shoot the messenger but each genre can be a, a different language or, or dialect of yes and music is actually the medium some that was his argument that is interesting but what I would take from that we don't want to just take that literally I would say that every time you're in a different genre you've got to follow the rules of that genre exactly. and, be em- and be emulating something of that which is why I would say don't try and reinvent the wheel mm-hmm. if you're new at this stuff what you're actually trying to do is emulate the songs that you like and that will lead to that kind of uh, let's finish on uh, a jam of that and then we'll move on to our next example mm-hmm. did that within a couple of seconds and if you're someone who is commonly reading tab and reading chord sheets or song sheets and following a song and you always get in a bit of a muddle and you find it hard to do try this even if you're a beginner because it changes the whole Mm -hmm. process it makes learning music and learning guitar not just reading and reciting but instead creating even if what you've done is the same stuff that you've heard a gazillion mm-hmm. times before. Let's try another jam. So I have to now come up with a genre and a key mm-hmm. for you. You come up with the rhythm line, I yep. try and play over it. Let's go funk. Ooh. Let's go G sharp. G sharp funk. That's actually, yeah, tricky. Right, okay. But it could be. Okay, G sharp funk. G sharp the funk. <laughs> G sharp the funk, yeah. <gasps> Come on, Niall. Woo! Oh! 
So Welcome keep doing back. it. Keep yeah. doing it. Don't stop. Should we get some changes? That's on? the rule now. You have to keep playing that the, the entire rest of this episode. Okay, so so funk is very uh, rhythm based. Yeah. You've got a rhythmic lead line over normally quite a simple drum beat. Yeah. My first instinct with that, what is it lacking, is not someone going. Dee, 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 dee. It was actually where's the. Dum, yeah. Dum, dum. I want I want the the bass nah, and the snare rhythm. back again. Absolutely, I need a kick and a snare in, in my <laughs> songs, man. Um, it's just my instinct as a musician. Yeah. It is. So. Um, these these kind of um, yeah, the chickers in to, to give it some percussion well. but and that's already added by you so certainly if I was a bass player that'd be minimal yeah. minimal and as a drummer as well um, a lot of funk drummers kind of say like take these toms away <laughs> never going to use them give me one symbol I, yeah, and this is what I I'm doing I've ever this heard literally the no exactly you don't do you you don't hear that's that's on the rock stuff right 80s you never hear it so um That would be my instinct. Now I'm um, for G sharp. I'm kind of running out of room a little bit. Play it again, and I'll, I'll see what I can come up with. Ah. to kind of uh, do too much too much bending and stuff that was my my kind of mm -hmm. what would you go for over the same thing The stuff that I was playing mm -hmm. was pretty much the same thing I would do over the 12 bar blues. Not only because that fits and is suitable, mm -hmm. but the other chords that you went for, yeah. you played a 12 bar blues. Yeah, which is very common. You played it, are, we, are we just playing a ninth chord here, a thirteenth chord? What, what are we playing? Yeah, both. Play? Yeah, so the, this one, my main Oh, so blues. you have a flat first. Okay, I was, I was playing what kind of individual like, notes and yeah. you were doing the flat first. So just the okay. nine, dominant nine chord. But from there, 12 bar blues in the key of G sharp, right? Very common for funk. So the other notes that I was going for, I was making sure that I was hitting notes that would work with the four yes. chord and the five chord. Exactly. Same way that we, we did that really thoroughly in the How to Play Blues episode, which I think was about episode five of another guitar show, but it was literally called How to Play a Blues Solo Starting with Five Notes. Same thing that works in that episode works over a, a funk because it's, it's the rhythm parts that's kind yeah, of the, the, the distinctive. And that's what funk comes down to. The, you can do it with funk. one chord. Yeah, so you could, we could speed this up. It's not all about the BPM, but we've typically, typically gone slower. Mm -hmm. We've gone very rhythmical, lots of stops, lots of chickers. Lots of percussion. And mm -hmm. yeah, and, um, and some sort of slow, imagine, imagining at least some sort of slow kind of drum and, and mm -hmm. rhythm and bass. But let's have uh, one final one now. So you come up with, yep. uh, there'll be more suggested learning if you want to get on uh, with, uh, you want to learn some funk. I believe Your Guitar Academy have a new funk course yeah. coming very soon, which I'm sure we will link to. But let's go for the final jam now. Uh, what genre and what key? Right. For me. So I'm going to start. On the acoustic. Nice key. Yeah, nice, a nice key. Um, I'll go B flat. Okay. 
Uh, Genre-wise. <laughs> I'll mention why I did that face in a second. Uh, I thought you might. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Genre-wise, let's go with pop. Okay. Uh, so B flat, if I was playing it one way, would be the first fret bar chord. So I'm not going to do that one. No. To give me some more room, I'm going to go six fret. Okay. Summer hits. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before I talk about mine, what were you playing in the lead line there? So I was B flat major. I went for well, even over that major I would say you were playing a hook. Yeah, well What's there we go. Hook? We're talking about songwriting. What's a hook? What's a hook? <laughs> a hook? What's a hook? It's a short it? phrase that is really memorable. It's almost like a riff. It does the same sort of thing, but the in the lead part. In the lead, yeah. It's the memorable part of the song. The whistleable, whistleable bit of a song. Hey, the old grey whistle test. That's your melody, that's your yeah. melody. Um, and what I was playing was the rhythm style of uh, Jason Mraz and yeah. yours, but to a chord sequence which is nicknamed typically the 50s chord sequence or the do-wop sequence. It is, yeah, sequence. actually, yeah, it was good. The one, minor six, four, and five. Uh -huh. Um, which, you know, we've been saying this is ripped from Jason Mraz and a couple mm -hmm. of other things, but it's it's so many songs, it's ridiculous. I remember when Rock was young, yeah. me and Susie had so much fun, holding hands and skimming stones. And remember, that's, this isn't actually the key of that song, Crocodile, Rock, Vale and John, but with the proportions of the chords being the same, it sounds basically yeah, huh? the same. Someone should do a series on that. I have <laughs> on YouTube. It's called Songs That Sound Shameless Basically Plug. the Same for that kind of reason. Um, but what we've done is got a rhythm part that sounds pop, mm -hmm. and then you try to make a hook yeah. as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Can you name any kind of, uh, to give people an idea of a hook, name songs with a great hook, whether lyrical or, um, or in the lead guitar part or anything. Um, what's that right? Don't worry. Don't worry. Be happy. Are you thinking? No, that's the one. That's one. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, just I, I actually I, I show my. Uh, somewhat questionable music taste but if you're talking about hooks musical hooks just listen to the first minute of any abba song you might not be able to stand <laughs> listening to more than that but what they yeah. do is stacking of hooks so essentially you have one riff and then another riff that works on top of that mm -hmm. the verse comes in well that's another hook yeah and then every, every part of it is just going, kind yeah. of listen to me, listen to me, They're listen to me. Geniuses. As opposed to many songs which actually act more like a backing track yeah. or a jam track, just for the vocal to really take prominence. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, uh, hooks and themes are something that I looked at a lot when I was looking at film music. Um, you remember I mentioned The Simpsons earlier yeah. in this episode? Yeah, exactly. That was a, that's, that's a musical hook, that is a theme. That do 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 As soon as kind you hear of, it. Kind of like, it's almost annoying when you... Yeah, you if you um, do it out loud. A great one, which is a, a riff, is that... Um, do 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 do... Nokia. That's not actually the Nokia oh. kind of theme. It's, um, <laughs> it is Franz Ferdinand, Take Me Out. Oh, that's right. But if you think of that, it literally oh, sounds like a mobile crazy. phone theme yeah, tune, it and it sounds annoying. Mm -hmm. But in musical context, 
it it's powerful it makes people jump up and down you know it is a theme it's it's more it's more than a riff because it's more the lead part it's mm-hmm. like the thing that um, you know seven nation army do 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 yeah that's a riff mm-hmm. but it's a riff that an arena of people like can't help but sing and bounce along to when when someone starts it going you know what i mean <laughs> that's a hook that's yeah. absolutely a hook it becomes more than a, more than a riff um and that's ex- exactly mm-hmm. what you were creating i suppose with. what we've done you know throughout these different genres is We've shown that, like you said, each genre has got this own, this these parts, these aspects that make it that. So I mean, and we've got, talk, and it's not talked about enough, I think. No, it's not. Because it can be daunting. You guys have just brought out a new funk course, and that can seem like if you've never yeah, done it before, it seems like thing. learning a new language. Yeah, I'm starting funk guitar, and you can think, oh, I don't, I don't listen to funk. Yeah, you what know, do I, I do about that? Do that? Do? Well, it, it, adds another element to your playing that you can add to a blues solo or add into a rock solo or anything else Mm -hmm. and it is you know that every genre is kind of defined but every genre merges as well every band is like a mix or a unique cocktail of showing how diverse we are Andy I know well that's that's (laughs) not normally my thing I mean I really am the three chords guy let's be honest but it's it's such a thing to be aware of how much genre impacts your jamming mm-hmm. and uh, and songwriting, don't fight that. Take things from it and add it to your unique cocktail. I think that will do us for today. Thank you so mm-hmm. much for watching, guys. Remember, the full lesson write-up is available at the top link of the description on the Andy Guitar website and the Your Guitar Academy website. Remember, we ping pong between the channels every Sunday for these episodes. So to be sure to see every episode, you've got to subscribe to both. And we will see you next time. Uh-huh. Catch you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.